I now call order the regular session meeting of the Board of Commissioners of the City of Tarpon Springs on Tuesday, May 19th, 2015, 6.30. Roll call. Mayor Archie. Here. Vice Mayor Larson. Here. Commissioner Terrapani. Here. Commissioner Banther. Here. And Commissioner Sieber. Here. Tonight's inv invocation will be given by Reverend Bob Russell of Family of Faith Church. Please stand, remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance following. Let us pray. God, our Father, as we gather for this meeting, may we be guided by your wisdom, your love, and your abiding presence. We pray your wisdom teaches us what is truly important and that you give us courage to do the right thing. We ask that you empower us to build a strong community for growth and especially unity among our leaders. We acknowledge that we are dependent on you and our trust in you completely. Watch over each and every one in our city as we engage in keeping it and our citizens safe. Bless our first responders, our police officers, our firefighters, paramedics, and from him and through him, all things both now and forever. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. At this time, we'll go to a uh, special presentation. It's indeed a pleasure to uh, award our uh, mayors of Enterprise Village and our 4.0 students. If uh, my colleagues would see on the stage, we'll turn it over to Ms. Manusas. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening. While the mayor commissioners are making their way to the stage, we'd like to recognize the principals that are with us tonight from Sunset Hills, Principal Mile, from Tarpon Springs Middle School, Principal Giles, from Tarpon Springs High School, Principal Joyner, and also from Tarpon Springs High School, um, Assistant Principal Fatalitas. Thank you. Um, just to let you know, just a couple of announcements. Tonight's presentation can be viewed um, on our Your Government Access Channel. If you visit our website, you can find the listing of days and times for the replay. And we will at I, if I, we could ask you to hold your applause so the students can hear their names as they're coming forward, please, thank you, and we'll get started. Tonight we honor the following students who represent in the city of Tarpon Springs as mayor of Enterprise Village during the 2014-2015 school year. From Tarpon Springs Fundamental, Daniel Tolfik. From Tarpon Springs Elementary School, Haley Dermadog. And from Sunset Hills Elementary School, Raynard Furstenberg. And I'm sure they did an excellent job representing our mayor at the city of Turpin Springs. Congratulations. Okay, our next item, we are recognizing the students, the fifth grade students that maintained a 4.0 grade point average. From fifth grade, we will recognize students from Tarpon Springs Fundamental, Tarpon Springs Elementary School, and Sunset Hills Elementary School. From Tarpon Springs Fundamental, Mitchell Allred, Myra Hanna, Benjamin Johnson, Joseph Ramirez, Caitlin Rossi, okay, Riley Sullivan,
and Andrew Theophilopoulos. From Tarpon Springs Elementary School, Angie Bardalis. Haley Demmerdog. Richard Gibaldi. And if I mispronounce these names, please forgive me. Nicole Isaac. Caitlin LaCostro. Alexander Rivera Zarate. And Devin Zade. From Sunset Hills Elementary School, Sarah Beck. Summer Major, Spiros Mazarakis, Elizabeth McQuarrie. Lauren Mueller, Colton Sacadellis, and Ephemia Trachilis. Nope. Okay. Now we recognize the eighth grade students from Tarpon Middle School. The eighth grade students from Tarpon Springs Middle School, Valesa Agoras, Tia Badal, Maria Chigueras, Kira Clark. Megan Cox, okay, Ellie Collins, Caden Culver. Erica Davis, Justin Dittmar, Mackenzie DeFresney. Shania Ezer, Amanda Foreman, Christiana Jones, Molly O'Neill,
Carlin Reinhardt, Peter Sacleridis. Kennedy Shards, and Stephen Wadsworth. Those are your eighth grade 4.0 students. And now we recognize the following seniors from Tarpon Springs High School. Megan Carrington. Ruth Chavez. No. Michael Decoder. Claudia Dilbeck. Megan Dillard, Madison Flick, Jessica Johnson, Daniel Jerkic, Jersing, okay. Kelsey Lynn, Jeanette Mizuraka. Kelly O'Neill, Sophia Poulos, Julia Sadoyan, Cameron Shapiro, Marissa Soriano, Georgina Zooks. And Joanna Theophilopoulos. That concludes, those are our 4.0 seniors from Parkin Springs High School. You know, we just like to applaud all the hard work of all of our students uh, this evening that was awarded and uh, especially thank all of the parents, parents, guardians, uh, teachers, principals, everybody that uh, helped these young people to be successful here tonight. We just want to congratulate all of you. I know you feel especially proud of uh, the one that you came here to, to recognize. I don't think all of y'all came here just because we had a commission meeting tonight. <laughs> But I don't know if any uh, commissioner have any comments. If not, then we'll uh, allow you to uh, leave. We'll recess for a while, just in case you might want to leave before we start. <laughs> I just funny, like I did graduate school. You can hang around now. Undergrad, high school, stuff. Why? Well, I mean, they were private schools. They were rigorous. It wasn't, you know, and I chose purposely because, like, in college, I could have gotten, like, an easy GPA, but I wanted to do something hard. Math was really 
classes. So I did economics major, which I, I knew I could pass. And then I did math with challenge. Myself. Like high school is like too easy. Oh. And so mm -hmm. I like, I was scared. I did school okay. I had the three point or something. But I didn't. I'm right, I could have done better. You know? I think I got 3.1. Yeah, 2.8 undergrad, 3.1 in high school. And my brother, I was talking about the band, but he was a little song. He's like, I got a 4.0. I'm like, John, you don't have a class. You know, you just do music. <laughs> well, there's certain. Well, but yeah, but back then, even they didn't have it. It was different. Yeah, I, I always had to earn my grades. Yeah, I, I responded. You didn't get my grades. If you want, I could like pick you up on the way as I'm flying down. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going for it's it's a tough time here for us. It sucks. Uh, my school's short on subs every day, uh, so I'm gonna work for a period of one to two. I'm gonna leave midway through my fourth period. <laughs> Zip on down south. You didn't get my response. It's weird. I I did. I, I, <laughs> No, I appreciate it. See you there tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, if I'm not there on time, I'll be just a little late. I'll be close. That'd be good. Thank you. Oh, have fun with that. There's nothing you don't know. It's, it's just the state legislature in all their glory. Have you done it? Yeah. Townsend, me, me, Townsend, and the mayor did it Largo. Oh. And we were done early, but we had to physically stay in the room for four hours. Oh, for real? Yeah, we're done 30 minutes. We had, we had, they, like, I tried to walk out. And they were like, if you want your certificate, you have to stay in the room. I'm like, we're done. He said, state statute's four hours. I'm like, you're kidding me. Like, they're like, no, we're not. Right there. <laughs> 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 and you will have people I'm like, I might be able to. You'll sit there. You'll have a uh, all sure. all Yeah, a few people like Mark and Eileen. You'll ask questions. And you'll sit there and think to yourself. How many people A elected and B not elected? Where were they? All around. People ask questions. They're like, did, did you do what you're proposing for ethics training? I learned one new thing. You can come to Skype via a meeting. Like the, uh, the one new thing. I start the meeting back again, and we'll go to uh, public comments. Any item? Uh, that's not on the agenda. Uh, come forward, state your name, address for the record. Good evening, Mayor, Board of Commissioners. <coughs> Peter Delac is 514 Ashland Avenue. I come before you <clears throat> to say, God rest your soul, John Hubbard. God rest your soul. I knew John only from the time I came on the board. But since that time, and you know, it's been about 11 years, I've gained to appreciate more and more uh, the value that Mr. Hubbard brought, not only to Tarpon, to Dunedin, and to some other cities, Pinellas County, but also to the state of Florida. He was one that truly uh, took on the the task of helping cities to progress and move forward to help their citizens protect their home rights and their values. And he did it in a fair and honest way. I can honestly say uh, I learned a lot from him. I know we had our sometimes disagreements on points, but I always respected his opinion. And even if I disagreed with him, he respected mine. I love you, John, and we're going to miss you terribly. And thank you for all you've ever done for us here. Amen.
Are there any other uh, public comments? Seeing none, we'll go to proclamations. Uh, we have National Public Works Week. This proclamation reads, whereas public work services provided in our community are an integral part of our citizens' everyday lives, whereas the support of an understanding and informed citizenry is vital to the efficient operation of public works systems and programs such as water, sewers, streets, highways, public buildings, and solid waste collection, and whereas the health safety and comfort of this community greatly depends on these facilities and services and whereas the quality and effectiveness of these facilities as well as their planning design and construction are vitally dependent upon the efforts and skill of public works officials and whereas the city of Tarver Spring recognized the contribution which public works officials make every day to our health safety comfort and quality of life Whereas the year 2015 marks the 55th annual National Public Works Week sponsored by the American Public Works Association. Now, therefore, I, David O'Archie, by virtue of authority vested in me as mayor of the city of Tarpon Springs, do hereby extend greetings and best wishes to all observing March 17th through the 23rd, 2015, as National Public Service Week. Uh, Thank you, Mayor and Commissioners. I'm Tom Funchen, Public Works Director. Uh, public, public work employees happily accept this proclamation and the recognition that goes along with it. Many times they go unnoticed unless, of course, there's a pothole, tree down the road, uh, some type of flooding of some sort. But every day these people go out and they work extremely hard, uh, and a lot of times they go unnoticed, like I said, men and women work very hard. So if you're out there and you, and you, and you see them working, uh, sweating away, uh, stop, wave, say hello, and you can say to your friends and all, those people are employees of Tarpon Springs, they're hard workers. But for those of you riding around and happen to see somebody leaning on a shovel, maybe daydreaming someplace, just remember, they're probably county employees. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Any uh, public comments on this item? Hearing none, we'll go to our presentation, item number two. Probably a lot of people have been waiting for city manager, police chief, grant opportunity. Yeah, and all you're waiting, you'll have to wait a little longer because this item is to grant the opportunity to Mr. Joyer, the principal of the high school, to, to make a special announcement to us. Evening, Mr. Mayor, City Council, Chief. James Joyer, Principal, Tarpon Springs High School, along with me, Lisa Fatalitas, Assistant Principal, and Chris Toscani, Assistant Principal. Uh, we'd like to go ahead and call up Tareen, Corporal Tareen Mathis, please. Tareen does not know. Uh, we've kept this a secret for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Stand there for just a moment. All right. Okay. This letter was uh, dated April 17th, 2015, and it states to the Pinellas County School Board and Tarpon Springs City Council members, it is my privilege and honor to nominate Corporal Tareen Mathis as the 2015 Outstanding School Resource Officer of the Year for Pinellas County. If I could use one phrase to describe Corporal Mathis, it would be dedicated to the students, staff, and community of Tarpon Springs. Tareen has Tarpon Maroon running through his veins. As a lifelong resident of Tarpon Springs, Tareen attended and graduated from Tarpon Springs High School in 2002. Upon his graduation from high school, he joined the United States Army and honorably served our country in Afghanistan as a military police officer. During his tour of duty, he was awarded the Combat Action Badge. 
He was honorably discharged from active duty in 2007. After completing his military service, he joined the Tarpon Springs Police Department and was assigned as the SRO at Tarpon Springs High School. As both a community member and SRO, Tareen has a personal commitment to the safety and security of all of our students, staff, and faculty members. His commitment is more than just a job. It is his passion and his dedication is evident daily. Along with his SRO duties, his extra volunteer activities include being a school advisory board member, assistant softball coach, active mentor to many of our students, co-founder of the Be the Bridge program, which is a program designed to help minority students transition from high school to college, assisted 35 of our 38 senior African-American males during the 2013-14 school year to graduate, expanded this program to all 9th through 12th graders this current year. He's an active volunteer in our Band of America Grand National Champions, including traveling with the group, as you know, being the Grand National Champions back in November. He assists with marching band duties. He volunteers and attended the Indianapolis Band of America National Finals, and he co-founded the Officer Charlie Conduct fundraiser held at Tarpon Springs High School this year. Tareen is an excellent role model for and has developed a positive rapport with all of our students. This rapport includes meeting with students and their parents to discuss grades, attendance, and their future plans. Additionally, he works with school staff, community members, and St. Pete College staff, including Mr. Ford and Dr. Bright, to secure the resources our students need in order for them to tour college facilities and earn college credits during the summer between their junior and senior year. He is an active member within our community, helping to provide our homeless students with food, shelter, and counseling. He is on the board of directors on the Citizens Alliance for Progress in Tarpon Springs, and he sponsored our Smart Choice Prom DUI reenactment activity, which included arranging to have Bay Flight land and take off during an assembly on Sponger Field. As an active member of our extended administrative team, Corporal Mathis meets with our members every Monday and provides us up-to-the-minute information with community concerns. As an administrator with over 25 years experience, I've had the privilege of working with many school resource officers. These men and women have displayed the character and commitment that is needed to help keep our schools safe. Corporal Mathis possesses these characteristics and more, and it is my honor to make this nomination. Thank you, James M. Joyer. And we have a nice... <laughs> Corporal, Ma Corporal Mathis, we have a... We've gone ahead and had a nice plaque made up. It says Corporal T. Mathis, Tarpon Springs High School, SRO of the year 2015 with our emblem emblazed on it. With our phrase, we just can't hide our sponger pride, presented 5-19-2015. Corporal Mathis, congratulations. It's, it's funny, because I saw my mom driving in. Sergeant Miller was calling me saying, where are you at? And I said to my mom, what are you doing? The kids have to use the bathroom. Got it. <laughs> then I see Major Young and then the rest of my family here and then the administration team. Um, thank you. Um, I look on the, the dais here and I see faces that I looked up to, or chief, the mayor, city manager, that helped mold me and to be in the man who I am today. A lot of personal friends like David and Mr. Terry Panny here, that I consider close friends of myself. Um, I, I I don't know what to say. I, I I do it because I think it's it's what's right. Um, kids need to know somebody love them, and if we give them that love, the the, the world is their oyster, and we need to foster that growth. Um, to my wife and my kids, I spend a lot of time away from home dealing with 
other people's children and not my own. And I thank you so much for allowing me that time to give to the community because it's my passion. And my admin team, uh, we, we, we go through these meetings and we're sitting there like, what are we doing this? Why is this happening? And in the end, it's because we want to see the best of all of our children. And I have a great support staff here. My chain of command includes Major Young, and he is, every time I pick up the phone and I say, I need this, or this kid needs a pair of shoes or this, do it, go get it, make sure they're happy. Um, so you know, um, I, I think we have the highest uh, African-American graduation rate in the district. I think the school district's at 66%. Last year we graduated 32 out of 33. This year we're at 35 out of 38. And uh, in the last two years we've placed 10 homeless families into housing with the organizations around the community. So I thank you all for giving my chain of command the resources we need to make this work. It's a team effort, and I just want to say thank you. I'd like to just take this time for Corporal uh, Mathis slip out the door. I know you don't want to stay around to the commission meeting. Uh, Corporal Mathis. Uh, well, I, I, I just like, you know, I'd like you to know that, you know, we appreciate you in terms of what you do. For the city of, of, of Tarpon, I think that you epitomize what Tarpon Spring Police Department is all about. <clears throat> you know, in Rotary, we talk about service of, above self, and I think that that's what the police department is about. And you are a prime example of an individual that always giving of himself for others. I want you to let you know I personally appreciate you. I look at you as a role model, you know, and some people think that you have to be older than somebody to be a role model, but we model ourselves after people that we think have the type of character and traits that we would like to have. And I think that you exemplify that, you know. I always tell you about patience because as a young person, you know, you want to do it all today, and sometimes you have to wait for some things to happen. But I'm so happy that, you know, um, that you received this award I can tell you truthfully there will be many, many more in your future as you continue to do the things that you <coughs> desire, you know, in life. So uh, from my position as mayor of the city of Tarpon, I personally thank you for all that you do for citizens of Tarpon Springs. So thank you. Any uh, public comments on this item? Awesome, awesome, incredible. Yet, we won't see this on the news, and we won't read it in the paper maybe till the end of the month or the next month. Over the last few months, police departments all over the country have been getting a pretty bad rap. And I'm not saying that some may have extended bounds, I'm not going to get into that. But the point is, we as a community, through people like Mr. Mathis, are really tackling the problems that are at our society in a larger scale. And we need to let people know about Tareen and the progress and the things that community police officers, people who live in the community, who are part of the community, 
how that really changes the dynamics of a police department. And I've known Tareen for a while, and uh, he's always got a smile on his face. Whenever I've gone to games or anywhere, all the kids are hanging on him like Santa Claus. So thank you for your inspiration. And I hope through our administration, who I have quite a bit of confidence in, I saw a sign out by the public safety facility, experienced police officers wanted. It's going to be hard to find somebody like Tareen, but that's, that's the standard we should be looking for. And hopefully, and I don't know, but they've got a whole bunch of stuff on the plate, but maybe we need to do some kind of young intern program to incorporate some of the kids in high school or stuff who aren't really always wanting to be college people, but can see maybe an opportunity. And with Tareen's guidance and his mentoring, it, I think it shows another side. And the reason why I kind of bring this up is I have a family friend um, and their son, he's about, mm, I guess about 21 or 22 now. And I saw him over Christmas, and he's a firefighter. And I said, whoa, you're the last person I expected to be a firefighter. He says, well, I was thinking about being a police officer, and I was thinking about being a firefighter. But firefighters are always the heroes. They're going in and saving people. And police officers are always the people arresting and people getting mad at them. We have to find a way to change that attitude. And that's the prime example of how you do it. Thank you, Tareen. Any other public comments on this item? Let's see. Um, I thought item three was, was item three fell on. We're now going to our consent agenda. Uh, attorney fees. Trash Matt Stanall LLP invoice number four eight seven two five uh, three is special events out of school bash June twentieth uh, Fourth of July picnic July fourth Independence Day celebration and fireworks display July fourth award file number one five zero one 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 dash n dash r s single source purchase of programmable. Logic controllers. Uh, seven is renew file number 130094-C-CM. Road and landscape material. Uh, Co-op utilizing Pinellas County Cooperative. Contract number 123-02-15-B. KF uh, Florida Dirt Source. What file number 150110-C-CM Road and Landscape Material Utilizing Pinellas County Cooperative Contract Number 1450188-PF Aggregate Material uh, Doing Business as Angelo's uh, Recycle Materials. Nine Renew File Number 140058-C-DM Surplus uh, uh, Asset Liquidation and or auction services with related solutions through the National Joint Powers Association contract number 042911-GD. Um, I, uh, 10 is award bid number 150090-B-RS, chemicals for the reverse osmosis uh, water plant. 11 is award file number 150100-C-RS, furniture for uh, reverse osmosis plant through the state of Florida, contract number 425-001-12-1, furniture, office, and files. 12 is renew file 140073-N-DM, purchase of citywide internet and related services. Uh, any item anyone like to pull? Uh, talk about number nine I just for discussion okay number nine um, if I may mayor yes yes thank you 
Um, so number nine is in terms of the surplus assets, that's something that's always been of interest to me for, uh, for the city. Um, and I know that we've talked about it um, in the past in terms of how we go about it and how we sell them. And I don't have any issue with the process that we have in place for, um, for selling the surplus assets. What, what my, my point in pulling this is going into the budget season, uh, I think it would be beneficial for this commission to um, have a list of the assets that were sold, um, what they were sold for in terms of dollar figures and which departments uh, those funds were reimbursed, or uh, yeah, I guess departments and funds those, those uh, assets were reimbursed into. Um, just thinking about moving forward with budget season, Mark, I think that that's something that would be uh, beneficial to the commission to see in terms of, you know, what assets, I mean, we sit here and approve new trucks and new equipment all the time, but it'd be nice to see you know, our equipment as it gets older, when we're selling it and what it is that we're selling and how much money it's bringing. So, and, and what department it's, that money's going back into. We will do that. Thank you. Any other items? <laughs> Joe, let a motion. We have approval. A second. Any public comments on any of these items? Roll call. Commissioner Seeker? <coughs> yes. Commissioner Banther? Yes. Commissioner Terrapenny? Yes. Vice Mayor Larson? Yes. Mayor Archie? Yes. Uh, next is special consent item 13 award bid number 150089-B-JJ reclaim water storage pumping and transmission facilities. Mr. Robertson. Good evening, Bob Robertson, Public Services Program Manager. The item before you is uh, reclaim water storage pumping and transmission uh, contract for construction. Um, this is a bid project and uh, the low bid was $4.386 million. Um, that, that amount includes acceptance of an additive alternate item that we added in, uh, replacement of the golf course irrigation pump station. We had some money that we were able to use. Um, we put that in the bid and we were able to afford doing that. This is a cooperatively funded project. Um, $1.96 million is reimbursable to the city from the water management district. And I'm here for any questions. Any uh, questions for Mr. Robinson? Joe will entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Any public comments on this item? Roll call. Commissioner Sieber? Yes. Commissioner Banther? Yes. Commissioner Terrapini? Yes. Vice Mayor Larson? Yes. Mayor Archie? Yes. Item number 14, authorized utilization of Pinellas County contract number 04. One nine seven eight six uh, radio uh, console system. You have the chief. Th yep. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, you have a memo from our chief uh, procurement officer, Jay Jackus, um, to utilize Pinellas County contract um, to purchase new radios for police and fire departments. Currently, all <coughs> police and fire departments operate off the county 800 megahertz system. Um, it's an advanced system. Uh, everything is digital now. Our radios are pretty much nearing their end of life cycle, they're old, and they need to be replaced. Currently, we're operating, we, we can get a good discount off the county contracts while we're bringing this to you now. Um, this will be funded with local option sales tax funds, but we need to replace all of our radios, police, fire, radios in the command vehicle, uh, radios in dispatch. Um, this is a very big project. Um, it's either we do it now and save roughly $90,000, or we wait maybe a year or two, and it may cost much more. So we're bringing this forward to you now um, to make this purchase. Um, again, once these, once these radios reach their end of life cycle, they're done, they're no longer maintained, and you know, we would lose the ability to communicate. So um, this is why we're bringing this to you now. We can, we can save money off this contract and, um, and get these radios and be set for 10 to 15 years. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, just kind of piggybacking, I guess, on what uh, Commissioner Tarpanda was talking about. What with these, when we replace them, will we try to sell those? There's a trade-in value. Trade-in value, yes. Okay. And, and obviously, if they if they reach their end of life cycle, that trade-in value is much less. Okay. So all that's calculated in that ninety thousand dollars. In addition, questions for Chief. That's right. Uh, Just I was going to actually ask a similar question to yours. So when we do get a little bit of trade-in value, that money will go back into the same fund that we're utilizing to pay for this? Well, this, this quote is with the trade-in value. Oh, gotcha. It, it, would be, it would be higher without it. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Chair will entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. 
Any public comments on this item? Roll call. Commissioner Sieber? Yes. Commissioner Banther? Yes. Commissioner Terpani? Yes. Vice Mayor Larson? Yes. Mayor Archie? Yes. Auditors of resolution, uh, item number 15, uh, Auditors 2015-12, Amendment to the Comprehensive Zoning and Land Development Code, Article uh, 11, Section 191-01, Signage accessory to the sale of gasoline is second read. Ordinance 2015 12, an ordinance of the city of Tarpon Springs, Florida, amending Appendix A, Comprehensive Zoning and Land Development Code, Article 11, Section 191.01 of the Code of Ordinances of the city of Tarpon Springs, Florida, to amend signage accessory to the sale of gasoline and providing for an effective date. That's the second reading of Ordinance 2015 12 by title only, was published in the Tampa Bay Times by title only on April 3 and May 8, 2015. Anything new for us? Mayor, commissioners, this is Heather Earl, our principal planner, and no, we don't have anything new. Uh, Vice Mayor. Thank you. Um, at the first reading, I had a couple questions regarding the ordinance, um, and, and I'm not sure if the answers that I received really address the questions that I was asking. Um, I, I understand the desire and, and the need to go to digital signage for the gas stations, which is addressed um, when you look at 191.01 uh, Part E, uh, which makes sense to me. My, my question or my concern is why we're doing uh, Part C and D, which both seem to address increasing the size of the signage. Um, and I wanted to get clarification on that before we move forward. Uh, Mayor, commissioners, I actually have a representative here who was um, part of this request um, coming into, yes, it's a staff initiated request, but they were part of the actual impetus for this. I'm going to actually let them discuss this because being that I'm very new, sure. I wasn't here when this, when, this was talk, when this was discussed. So that being the case, thank you. Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners. Katie Cole with the law firm of Hill Ward Henderson, 311 Park Place, Suite 240, Clearwater. And I represent Racetrack Petroleum, who is one of the uh, owners of gas stations here in the community. And we did meet with staff previously to ask about some modifications to this provision of the code. And as Heather spoke, the staff actually drafted this and then just sent it to us after it was advertised. So we weren't integrally in, excuse me, intimately involved in the details. However, based on your inquiry uh, two weeks ago, I went back and looked at some of the language that Steve and I had previously spoken about. And so there were two things. One, I think that there was an acknowledgement that the current code allows for an additional sign for gas prices but the, the trend now is to have some branding plus the gas price on, all, on signage at gas stations. And so there was not a desire to have multiple, allow a greater number of signs than was previously allowed and therefore just roll in the total square footage of permitted signage to divvy that up between what used to be one price sign and one branding sign now can be combined and just have two separate signs. Secondly, there was a change, and this is a nuance that... Uh, um, can you repeat what you just said? Is that in reference to Part D? Where it's, yes, uh, it is. Okay. It is. So that kind of goes into the deletion in Part A and in reference in Part D. A gasoline service station may allocate its total allowance of freestanding sign area. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry. I didn't mean That's to interrupt. Okay. I just want to make sure I, I'm following along. Secondly, your concern was about going from 18 square feet for the amount of signage available for the pricing to the proposed 25 square feet. And I think as um, the staff spoke at the last hearing, 25 was not a magic number other than the fact that it is a round number. It is one that is commonly used in signage. It is a standard box. But I think most pertinent is the current code allows for nine square feet of sign face, which is defined in the code on each side of the sign as opposed to the proposed 25 square feet of sign area. And if you look at the definitions in your code, sign face is defined as the area of actual 
advertising signage, so it would be the boundary of the numbers in this instance, versus sign area, which is the boundary of the box, for lack of a better description. And I am not a mathematician nor a sign manufacturer. However, I did pull out my calculator, and I think you had a sample of one of racetrack signs in your um, packet that looked similar to this. And this is a 100 square foot sign, which it was simply a sample. This was not to imply that this was the sign that um, will be brought in. But looking at this as an example, on this, the gas prices represent about 40% of the sign area. So if you take those two definitions, sign area versus sign face, it's about 40% of the sign area. If you take 25 square feet of sign area, which is proposed, versus nine square feet of sign face, that's about 36%. So I think using this as an example is, I just ran the numbers just to see what it came out as, and, and it's pretty close to those same numbers. So if you look at the fact that nine square feet of sign face for a gas price is about 36% of a 25 square foot of sign area, that is consistent. Did I totally lose you? I, I didn't, I, I would, wanted to try to give you something tangible because I know it helps, but I think the difference in the definitions, um, you can see in section A, it has, what the deletion is, the sign shall not exceed nine square feet per sign face, whereas in section C, it is an allowance of an additional 25 square feet of sign area in addition to the sign area which is otherwise permitted on site. So if you, it, so just in layman's terms, it's the difference between the numbers versus the entire box. I, I guess what I'm still trying to fully comprehend is, are, are we making the signs bigger? And, and I think um, I mean, you're talking about how much space is allocated to the cost of the gasoline and, and, and different mathematical calculations, but I, but I think what I'm asking, and I, I suppose what maybe some residents are curious about is, are we making the signs bigger? And, and I think based on, on those calculations on this, not particularly, it certainly depends on which sign application is brought in. I think the point is, there's a measurement of a sign face that's this, and there's a measurement of sign area that's this, and that difference is accounted for in the nine versus the nine or 18 versus the 25. It's not exact, I, I'm not implying that. I just was trying to give you some re relative explanation as to how those numbers flow and what the practical impact would be, which I know is your concern, Vice Mayor. So frankly, I don't know that it's going to generate significantly more signage at all. It's just a difference in how it's calculated. So I guess the rationale is just to go from 18 to 25 just because you want larger signage. Is, uh, that's what I'm trying to understand too. No, I think it's two things. It, it's the, how the sign is calculated because you're now combining a gas price with your overall signage. So instead of being permitted a sign by itself with just a gas price, it's going to be combined into the overall signage calculations. Okay. And so to split that up, there's a really negligible difference between if you're looking at how, how the code defines sign face versus sign area, there's a negligible difference. I mean, maybe a more exact nut, uh, apples to apples would be 10 to 25 instead of 9 to 25, but I, it was, that was the best rate analysis that I could give based on the examples in your packet, just to. I, I appreciate uh, the explanation. Um, I, I, maybe I don't fully understand it, but I appreciate it. Uh, I, I continue to wonder why we, I, I'm on board with E. I, I'm on board with um, allowing an electronic reader board. I, I understand gas prices change multiple times throughout the day sometimes. Um, so, so I get the desire for the electronic reader board. I'm not fully understanding why there needs to be any change 
to the size of signage. That's, I don't know, that, that's where I'm at. But I, but I appreciate your answer. Thank you. Well, let, let me uh, I just muddy the water a little bit, too. I, I don't know whether it's clear or not. But what would happen, and this is for you and staff, if there was no change in relationship to the signage from the nine-foot uh, face, what would it do in relationship to um, that the actual sign that we're talking about now? If you only had that the nine foot face, could you do it within that that space there, or it would give you a, a chance to have two signs then instead of just the one? I think that that's the key, Mayor. Is instead of having. Um, I was thinking about there's a gas station on Alt 19 just outside of downtown and you can notice there's a very small monument sign that simply has numbers on it and there's no no other in then additionally there's a freestanding sign that has a logo this regardless of the nine square feet of sign face to 25 square feet of sign area I think that that's a negligible number and we're getting lost in the weeds <coughs> on that. I think one of the things that is important here is the ability to take your total allotment of freestanding signage and use it to include both gas prices and branding and not separate those and have a separate or additional gas price sign that might be so small. Also, in my client's situation, their property is located on US 19. So frankly, a nine square foot sign on US 19 to show the price of gas is really Not meaningless. Out of character. <laughs> so and, I, and you mentioned branding, um, but, but the electronic reader board aspect is only showing Ab gas prices absolutely okay absolutely just the numbers well again i and i appreciate your patience with me i i know that um th there are people within the city that are very sensitive to what we do in terms of signage um we we made uh, an exception to our rule for the hospital which some people are very much in support of and some people think that their sign is too bright uh, I know there's a sign on Keystone, which is not within the city of Tarpon Springs, uh, for a church that we have no uh, jurisdiction over anyway, but, but it's near the city, and I get comments about that as well, um, that it's literally painful to the eye. So I, I know there are people that care about signage, and that's why I'm asking these questions. But again, I appreciate your patience as I ask these. Thank you. No, and I appreciate the opportunity to respond. We're, we're at somewhat of a disadvantage since neither of one <laughs> us drafted the code <laughs> to best explain it but I think the bottom line is the increase is frankly negligible and simply as especially in light of the definitions of sign face versus sign area and Steve ex Steve's explanation at first reading of it, it is a more industry standard a 25 foot cabinet or a is is more industry standard is frankly one of truly the best explanations. We can back into why the numbers are negligible, but I, I think he chose it simply because it was an industry standard And then one, one additional just follow-up question. Is, is there a different smaller number rather than the additional 25 square feet that would reach the goals um, that, that the gas stations have while still uh, not increasing the uh, square footage by very much? Is there a smaller number that would also work? I mean, I, it, that's certainly up to you all of a smaller number that would work. I think it's, I think we're looking at the total amount of freestanding signage. And I, again, you're talking well, I thought, about. I, I talked to the city manager about this earlier today. I thought that there was a, a particular number that was like standard for this type of signage. And I, I was looking to find a way to uh, help make that work. The 25 square feet, I think, is that standard number, which that standard cabinet size number, based on my understanding. It, and again, I think you're talking about 4% difference 
based on the example in your packet and what we did. So, um, I mean, if you're looking at nine square feet now plus then 10 square feet of sign face, it, I think it's so negligible that it's hard to give you a different number is the point. 18 to 25 is a negligible number. So um, <laughs> I, I'm having a hard time giving you any different answer because again, we didn't write it. We're just explaining to you the difference in the definitions and why that the difference in those definitions make this change very negligible. And I'll Thank you. <laughs> Anything else? Oh, I don't have any additional questions. Uh, the chair will entertain a motion. Move approval. Second. Any uh, public comments on this item? Roll call. Commissioner Sieber? Yes. Commissioner Banther? Yes. Commissioner Terpan? Yes. Vice Mayor Larson? Yes. Mayor Archie? Yes. Uh, next, we'll go to miscellaneous items. Item number 16, discussion. Uh, Tarpon Spring Citizens Academy. Thank you. Commissioner. It's a little less math involved in this one. I, oh, didn't, I did minor in math in college, but I was getting a little confused there as well. But anyway, um, no, this is something I have thought about for uh, for, for, for quite uh, some 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 time actually. Uh, Oldsmar and Largo have these, and it's basically a way to get citizens involved in uh, the in city government in the sense of more off showing off the different facets that they have and i look more to oldsmar as the example because of their um, size and basically what what oldsmar does is they they run um it's a it's like a nine week course and by course it's a, though it's like one evening a week uh, uh though for nine weeks and at each meeting, and you have a class that you, you actually apply to be a part of this, and they take in 25 residents, I believe. You, you, can, you can be a non-resident to be in this, but they give preference to residents. And then at, 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 though, at, at each class, they showcase some part of the city. Now, they even have less of a full service city than, than we do, so we have a lot more we can show off that they do uh, the fire department or their RO plant. And, uh, so it's kind of like a mini leadership panelist, which I'm just finishing up now, if you think of it that way, or like what the sheriff does at, at, at his academy. And anyway, um, I, I, I think for Tarpon Springs, we're, I mean, to my knowledge, maybe besides St. Pete, we're the, we are the most full, full service city in the county, and uh, we have so much to showcase. And I think many of our residents um, that are interested uh, in government don't quite know everything that we do at, as a city from the police department to the fire department to the RO to public works to theater I mean many many parts and I think by um, by doing this we could get um, more more involvement from from the public I think it would help also to um, continue to better improve that customer service mindset that we always try to improve here at, 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 at the city that we're not just kind of doing things here and residents are over there, but get more of that cohesion involved and then showcase what their tax dollars are, 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 are actually go, go, going towards. And um, I know when I was younger, I would have, I'm kind of a geek, I, I would have done it in a heartbeat, you know? And um, uh, I think it'd be a great thing. And I think also it'd be a great way to get um, a larger pool um, of applicants for boards. I know we have, uh, uh, talked about di different ways to get uh, new applicants for 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 um, advisory boards and get a more of a diverse pool and I think this would be a way too to uh, to do that people might be able to get get it get it get it get interested um, in city government and our, our various things that, that that we do the good part is if um, if you all if we're all in agreement um, and I can work on this more in June and some of July, then bring it back for more official approval. Uh, Oldsmar's agreed to give us everything they have as far as the, the actual structure. So we don't, have, we don't have to re, re, reinvent the wheel as far as the application, the process. We can take it and make it our own. And uh, I, 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 I just think it'd be a great idea. It'd be a great way to get residents more involved, to get you know, be people more interested in, in advisory boards or running for office or you know, what have you. And uh, um, I'm kind of surprised we haven't done it sooner. So um, it's something I would like to go ahead and do if, if, if you all, or not do, but you know, kind of put together in, in, in the one a more so solid, you know, so solid, solid uh, proposal, if you all are in agreement on it. And again, Oldsmar is willing to um, let, let me come over there and uh, take everything they have. And um, I, I did ask them 
uh, budget-wise, uh, how much does it cost? Obviously, there's 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 ways there's there's parts that you can't calculate. You know, if you're got salaried employees, but they budget actually hard costs about a thousand dollars a class, and that's um, they get they they get a shirt. There's food, etc. So it's not it's not a huge budgetary expense, but I I think it, I think it, it would be well worth it. So I love to get you uh, love to get y'all y'all's input on it. Oh, I. I, I definitely don't have any problem in the um, exploring of it. I, I would suggest it, is that those uh, departments like the police, uh, fire, the rest, that there's some discussion with them in terms of, uh, you know, manpower, those type of mm -hmm. things in terms of doing it, you know, how do they feel about it, uh, those things. But I, I don't have any problem in you getting additional information and, you know, being able to talk to them. Uh, from a perspective of, uh, of what what it's going to entail for them to to do it, and uh, I guess from that it's just a matter of you know how is it administered, um, and city manager I guess will get with those department heads in terms of how to you know, administer in terms of signing up those type of things. So, but I don't have any, any concerns. So, Commissioner Tarpan, thank you. Commissioner C. Um, I would just. Uh, say thank you commissioner for bringing it forward I think uh, as we sit up here there's a lot of different roles that this commission um, strives to undertake um, as we sit up here and I certainly think that commission initiatives are something that um, from time to time we may not see en enough of because a lot in a lot of cases it's hard to bring initiative to fruition and, and dedicate a lot of time to actually seeing it through so I thank you for uh, bringing it forward um, yeah, I, I absolutely have no problem supporting the, the uh, early stages and moving forward and trying to get a better look um, at what the city of Oldsmar does and how this, this city would it be able to implement it um, and a little bit more in terms of what you envision. Uh, but, but from the get-go, I think it's a good idea, and I definitely say uh, appreciate the initiative. So thank you. Go to sleep. Uh, yeah, I also think it's a great idea. Do you know who administers and runs the classes in Oldsmar? Um, they do it through uh, the clerk's office. Um, I actually think that they do some, sh uh, when I was in, uh, uh, when I was talking to the clerk, they, she says they do share it sometimes. But uh, ultimately, and I was just thinking it inside, and I did talk with Irene briefly about it, um, uh, uh, though about one one a week ago, uh, the clerk's office, and I think especially in our case, would be best equipped to administer the the whole you know process of it so and how often are these classes or well um how, how they um oldsmar though it's nine weeks a year it's just one class a year and okay. they do theirs in the fall uh i that's one thing i'd like to get y'all y'all's input on and then staff as well i think fall's too busy here with everything we do for us i think more um after epiphany starting in january um would be a better time for us um but that's but yeah there but we can have it shorter than nine weeks longer i don't see it see the the, the need for longer but um yeah it's just a, it's not a year-round thing it, it's um they do it like a one-time class okay great thank you oh. any other oh, question so from that uh, thank you go forth young man thank you sir i appreciate it mayor any public comments on this item Seeing none, then uh, this concludes our agenda. Uh, Chief? Um, just one comment. We went up to uh, Washington last week, my DC last week, myself and a bunch of agency members for um, Law Enforcement Week, and it was, uh, it was well done. It was a solemn occasion. It was, um, it was heartbreaking, but yet it was honorable to be there because of, you know, there's 20,500 names on that wall up there to improve our officer and the other ones that were also um, killed in line of duty from our agency, and um, we got to really help and support the family, which which was a good thing. And um, kind of one of the highlights is um, one of uh, Teresa's daughter, Alina, got to take a selfie with President Obama. So uh, that was uh, that was kind of neat for her. And I think he said to her um, when he was doing it, "You're not going to put this on Facebook, right?" And of course, you know the answer to that. But um, it, it was a very good week for all of us, um, and, and it helps us move forward, you know, towards eventual closure. Um, you know, we, we ultimately have to move on, but we always have to be there for the family and the department. But um, it, it really was a, uh, an honor to be up there last week. Thank you. Thank you. Nothing to answer. City Manager? Just one thing. Um, as we end the school year, we were 
We have been working probably since January um, on an innovative idea of the possibility of a partnership between the city and the high school for a public pool. Um, that is something as we went to look for a model to deal with, there is no model that we can find to look at. So it's one of those things we have been having to look since January at every hurdle that we would have to do in the thing. Um, and I didn't want to bring it to you until we were sure the major portion of the hurdles um, were over. Our last conference was Friday with the city attorney and the attorney of the school board to deal with the many issues along there. Um, so we're not ready to have it in the press yet. We're not ready, but the word is starting to, the word is starting to leak out. Well, no, but I don't have to comment because we're not ready to get the details. <laughs> We are getting closer to the point and closer with being maybe within months of looking at the idea and bringing the concept of me to the city and the school to the school board, um, what it would take to do that. And uh, so as you hear rumblings, we're just not ready to come with you yet because we're still working out the many, many details and looking at locations, looking at the ability to do it, the ability to do it within a budget. Um, but now we have got a lot of the stage going and people are starting to get excited. I think you're here trickling of the words that we're working on it. So I just want to let you know we are diligently working on it. It's looking like that uh, we will be making proposals to each board to discuss the concept and see if it's something we may want to do. But to bring it to you, we need to have everything laid out to you and we'll be diligently working on that and uh, um, hopefully coming to you maybe by the start of the next school year with, uh, with what it would take, what the commitments from both parties are, and open it up for the public and stuff and see if that's something that the, uh, the citizens of Tarpon Springs for their high school and for their city would want to, to be in, involved in. This is something that's probably been I don't know, David, 20, 25 years we've talk, been talking about in this community. It was one of the reasons I was reluctant to give up the nursing home site because I always envisioned that as possibly a piece of land to do it. Um, but um, hearing that from those people, the school may have a piece of land that we may be able to use to do that partnership. It fits in well with all the problems you have with joining a public facility with a school. It's perfect on the layout. So. All the cards are coming together for, you know, the ability to make this presentation. Again, have both boards decide if that's something for the future of the community. So um, I just want to let you know where we are and that is going on. And when we tighten up those details and get everybody set, we'll be ready to start making those presentations to you and uh, see what the will of the, the public and the commission are if we should proceed to a more advanced state to do that with. So I just wanted to let everybody know that. Well, I'm sure it's not going to be in the paper. <laughs> but, uh, it can be in the paper. I'm just not going to have much comments for him about the mechanism. Well, uh, we, we're hopeful that, you know, it's, it's downhill now um, in terms of doing it, uh, in terms of working out a lot of the kinks. Um, I, I, I could tell you that I probably have had more comments about a pool than almost anything that anybody would ask me, you know, before I came on the commission, as a commission, vice mayor, mayor, and definitely don't ever talk to any young people because as soon as they hold court, they want to know when they're going to get a pool. <laughs> so it's, it's, it seemed like a great opportunity. It's a hope that nothing derails this. You know, sometimes you don't even want to hear about it because until everything is signed, sealed, and done, you know, there's that thought that, ah, oh, it might not happen, and you get your hopes up. But it seemed like a great opportunity uh, for everyone, the city, uh, citizens, uh, the school. Uh, you know, sometimes they say it seems like a no-brainer, but we, we've seen those type of things happen, too, though. But uh, hopefully this thing will work out. I mean, I just, you know, it's hard for me to even envision a pool in Tarpon. I'm, you know, I know how long it took to get a gym that we could say that you could play basketball in. I mean, and other cities have it. So I uh, hope this is something that we can uh, all agree on and the county can agree on. And 
and, and, and make it happen. So, But uh, Madam Clerk, I know you have some interesting things for us. Commissioner Bather. I'll have to get a bathing suit. I got a new one. <laughs> Lose some weight. Yeah, well, I just got to start working out more. I, don't, I can just hang around the pool. <laughs> no comments, Mayor. Vice Mayor. No comments. Uh, Commissioner Steele. Uh, well, I agree about the pool. I know when I was campaigning and walking all the neighborhoods, that was something I was asked repeatedly, not only from young people, but seniors as well. And then the second thing I want to say is uh, thank you for putting those bases on those light poles on Dota Canes. They are beautiful. And I'm glad to see the work has started and is progressing nicely. Who we start Betty? I, I, I just say it. I, I probably should have started the meeting off with, with uh, condolences to uh, the Hubbard family in terms of loss of. Uh, of John Hubbard and those of us that had a chance to work with him know the type of individual that he was and it's it's a loss to all of the citizens and cities that he was involved in but uh, his, his legacy will go on through the work that he's done also the condolences go out to uh, the Lantakas family in terms of their loss in uh, 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 individual that was a former commissioner too. Um, I didn't have a chance to serve with uh, this, but uh, I know of her and her work in terms of giving the tarpon. So um, our prayers are with both of those families. And uh, we look to adjourn this meeting if somebody with better eyes can see that it's 746, I believe. Give or take. Have a good world. I could have had a job. I could have been talking a long time.